HD. Okay, this guy's going to tell me where he, what time it is. Well, in you know, my brand new spanking working time piece here, it appears to be about five till the one o'clock in the afternoon. Now I'll have you know that way down there in, New in Little Rock, when we were with, with Pat Price, we were coming up here to Missouri to take St. Louis because the Yankees don't need St. Louis anyway. And what we got to do is we got, and there was a dead Yankee down there, and I took his timepiece, and it's been working ever since. <laughs> it's the dirtiest thing you ever seen. So if you want it there, I'll be glad to tell you the time. Man. Okay, and the time is? The time is, what is it? What else is big hands on it? Big hands Love, on the level. I, I, it, I think it's five minutes before. Five one. minutes before one o'clock. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Real big again during the 60s, the late 60s. Oh, 60s, the 1960s. The 1960s, and yeah. now it's coming back again. It went out of fashion, now it's coming back again. Tell us um, what it is again. It's a hammered dulcimer. Um, it predates the piano. So on a piano you strike keys, and the keys make hammers flip and strike strings. Well, this has you striking the strings. So before they got to the piano, they had this. And originally the piano, the first piano, was actually called a, a dulcimer, a piano dulcimer. So um, the uh, strings, there are two of each note. Um, there's a bass clef, treble clef, and a tenor clef. And so... So it uh, has a real nice range to it. You can play waltzes, you can play classical music, you can play ragtime, just like I was just playing. Uh, middle tunes, just about anything you want. How did you learn to play? Well, I love the sound of them all my life, and my daughter called me three years ago. Just three years ago? Just three years ago. Like you play the piano or something? No, I play flute. I read okay. music. But I can tell you, it doesn't translate. <laughs> play a little bit. Okay. Okay, video's going. You gonna actually spend the night here? Yes, sir. Right out there? Yep. You did it last night. I mean, uh, yep, I mean, they did it already last night. If, and, uh, if you're, if you're if you're doing it tonight, the only time that really sucks is if it's raining. <laughs> but uh, guess where he's gonna be? Be rolling in next to me. <laughs> he's gonna be rolling in. Where are you at? Right here. You've got at least cover. That's why you're a corporal. That's why you're a corporal. All right, ready to go. Sergeant Barry, United States Army, 498-84, 4th Brigade, 2nd U.S. Striker Brigade. <laughs> He, he actually is like a real army. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, said name rank, it's really no, that's okay. So what are you doing there? Tell us what you're doing. I am cleaning my musket. There is when you fire black powder, it is uh, use what's called fouling on the inside of the barrel. Yeah. And it's this black gooey stuff that if you don't clean it fast enough, it crusts up. Bill, During the Civil War, Bill, go your dad's tent, Bill. <laughs> go your dad's tent. They had a. Uh, do you have a patch that I can have? Anyway, thanks. It's this black gunk stuff on the inside of the barrel. And if you don't clean it out, it gets hard as a rock. And then it turns to a powdery dust and it just like clogs up everything. Yeah. So you gotta clean your weapon as soon as you can after a battle. 
they said that in a di diary I read, the guy said that at any given time, one third of the company was shooting, one third were loading, and one third were cleaning the rifles. And every ten rounds, they would have a Williams bullet that had a steel rim around the base of the musket ball, and that was supposed to help clean that residue out. But after, after like Billy said, after a few rounds, you get to a point where you can't ram that ship, that mini ball in there. The guys were hitting against trees, hitting against rocks to force that bullet down in there. And what the bullet looked like was that there. And that would be on a cartridge and there would be grease around it. And you'd rip the cartridge, pour the powder, seat the bullet in it, and then take your ramrod. Drive it down the barrel. Once it, well, once it was seated, then you'd ram that down. Then you'd have to put a cap on, and you were ready to fire. Very cool. Why didn't they just use bullets? Probably young to be uh, recruited. <laughs> By the way, this fire is hot. Fuck <laughs> off fire. Okay. 